Good to go. Call me with the last sip. Welcome, Facebook people. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Sifu Riley Boyer. Um, welcome, Riley. Great to have you on. Uh, it's been a, a while. We've been kind of doing a few people, but it's been great to actually get around to some Juglum people as well. Um, just a short bio, you began your training 1994-1995. Um, you started it with a bit of uh, Jugar and then Juglum specifically, uh, you carried on your training with Juglum. In around 2007, you left home, your home school, and you began cross-training with various other schools, making your way to Jinfun Mark in around 2011 and you're still training with that branch. Um, you met your Buck Macy for around the same time and became an official student. And you also have been with Lao Shoi Rodell um, for a few years now, um, studying uh, Mi Chuan. You've done lots of traveling in between and since, um, training with the greater SPM, the uh, Southern Mantis, the Buck May and the Mi Chuan community and you bring it all back to train at your home in Northern Illinois. Right. Yeah, so welcome. Yeah, welcome, Riley. Thank you. Yeah, this is pretty cool, guys. Yeah, so it's that, I mean, I think between myself, Alex, and, and Riley, we've, you know, we've, we've been in contact and, uh, through Facebook and Instagram and, you know, had contact through messaging and, you know, just seeing what everyone's doing and you know and coming here coming in there and supporting in every bit so it's really good to to have you you know virtually face to face and and talk mantis like it's long overdue so we're really welcome really welcome and, and thanks for making the time to talk to us and the group and share with us your experiences um so we always start with the first question tell us a bit about you and your martial arts training history and how you eventually got to uh, uh, Southern Praying Mantis? Yeah, um, so I, I started in 94, 95. I was, you know, right in that neck of 15 years old. Um, it all kind of happened organically in that brigade. You know, I've never trained uh, Taekwondo or any of the other local styles. It was South Mantis was my first introductory. Um, my dad doing uh, Tai Chi in the local area and the instructor happened to live very close to where he worked. So a little after time after that, they got me involved. And um, this was a very small group. It was garage training. Um, and it kind of took off from there. It was a um, collective of Kung Fu. So there was, there was Chuka praying mantis. There was uh, Duklam praying mantis, uh, Bach May, and some various other systems hanging around with the uh, core teachers that were there. Um, and so it was, it was a collective. So that's pretty much how I got going with it. And that was at 15 years old. That's still a, a, a great yeah. age to find. Yeah, um, and where, sorry, where was that in the US at the time? So that would have been like Algonquin, just outside of Chicago area. So right, uh, okay. Chicago area. <laughs> and how did you how did you find out about this l little group? Was that through your your father and and the Tai Chi? Yeah, yeah he was oh. looking for a Tai Chi teacher, um, and the guy he was training with at the time was going to no longer be teaching so somebody else to go to and he heard about this other guy um rick rick dambo is who it wound up being and at that point he became kind of impressed with his uh, methodology uh, i was rambunctious young uh, rebel <laughs> and they needed somebody to find some sort of um, connection with me mm. uh, so i started hanging out with super rick uh pretty regular and it just kind of bloomed out from there. That was, um, what were you doing Juga with Rick? Sifu yeah, Rick? it was all the same group. So back then, uh, Sifu Manny was still around, Manuel Rodriguez. Um, yeah. And Uncle Jack Moy was the Pac May collection. Um, so th these groups had already been, you know, training for a good while when I met them in and kind of took off from there. Sounds great. Uh, mixing all the different or, or training different systems, but training together as a group. Yeah, you know, at that point, I honestly didn't differentiate the different styles. I had 
no interest in many ways. I was ignorant to the the world that I was entering into. Sure. Yeah. To me, it was just it was just crapping. It was gung fu. It was uh, it was boxing, and it was fun. Nice. Yes. It wasn't until a little bit later that I really started to understand the uh, differentiations of the arts. Yeah, that's understandable. It's not um, it's not easy to differentiate when you first get involved with the um, the hakas, you know. Um, so, how long did you do that for? Man, I trained at that school for. Well, I think maybe by 2015, probably about 2018 or so, I started getting, you know, I kind of went the latchkey route and started kind of living the street. This So uh, three, four years, I was pretty regular. Um, mm. at, and then I kind of, I left for another three years or so. And then I came back uh, after some traveling and, and street life living. Yeah. So I was uh, about three and a half years at that point. Right. What was the um? What was the training like um, when you first started? What what was the sort of things you were learning and doing? Yeah, it wasn't wasn't super form based at that time. Um, we had the Chuka three battle set. Um, there was uh, short sambo jin sets, but nothing fancy. It was mostly just walking drills, walking drills, lots of jongs, uh, horse stepping. You know, just mm. that fundamental. Drills over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of push hands and chai sao and and hitting and things like this. Uh, we focused on a lot of san sao, uh, as opposed to the three, four, five moves that go on repeat over and over. Um, and that was pretty much the the early years. It was just that foundation. Lots of horse, lots of push ups. Uh, yeah. So you did um. You did chai sao. Did you do it the way the jiao ga people do it, or was it different? There's a lot of chai sao that I've learned as far as patterns. You know, you've got that the standard block. Yeah. You've got the where you start rolling more. Yeah. You can go like cho sao, chai sao, a guo sao. You know, so all these different shapes. So my understanding of chai sao was it wasn't just one exercise, but a a greater principle of that that pressing exercise. Correct. Yeah. In which case, all the hands have chai sao drills. Yes. And that's the, that's the way I always do. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Fantastic. So then how did, um, uh, after you'd been there for a few years, left, and then you came back, did you come back to the original training, or did you then sort of move on into specialization of a particular Mantis style? Um, you know, early on, there was, we started moving into the juke lam. So before I took off as a teen, practicing some of the Henry Puy style of the praying mantis. Um, and then we started moving into the Louis Jackman and the Jin Boon line. And that's kind of where we sunk our, our hooks into. Mm. Uh, so yeah, after I, after I took off for a little bit and wandered, I came back and it was, uh, yeah, it was the same group. And yeah, from there we were, they, they were fully focused um, at that point. Yeah, so mm. it, it went from there. Uh, I trained there for probably another, I don't know, maybe six years. Wow. And then yeah, did, yeah. Did, it, did it become, um, was the training very similar to what you did or was it becoming more like, okay, we, we have a curriculum to follow or we have yes. a... Yeah, the curriculum definitely at that point, there was, um, it, it definitely specialized into getting into the Daolu of the Duke Lam mm. uh, and just those specific drills. The, the value of the footwork never changed. You know, when I came back, I had to do a lot of that over. It was just the way it was, you know, yeah. kind of start over in some regards. Um, so that never changed. And to this day, that doesn't change. For sure. it's, it's foundation first. Was it, was it very different for you or was it quite easy just to transition into that? Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I just jumped in. I was, I, at that point, I was looking to absorb. You know, I've been living a crazy life and it was just like pinpoint. Um, and so I, I jumped into it like a duck to water. Yeah. Yeah. At least what, I like to. You know. Yeah. So what, 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 when you came back, um, what were you doing? Uh, what was the training like? Was it, was it again, sort of form based, like Sambo Jin, Santa or, or. Yes, that, that, um, you know, I, at that point I started training probably four or five days a week. Uh -huh. I was going to private lessons in the evening. Um, and yeah, it was, it was Sambo Jin on repeat just over and over, you know, um, we started getting into some of the two-man fighting forms that would teach like the uh, Ting Sao and the you know, listening, 
Mm. So I was really putting down the chi sao applications and drills that go with that, uh, which is like the opposite of chai sao. You know, mm. you've still got that connection. Instead of trying to resist, you're trying to slice and cut more. Yeah. So it's like the reversal of the energy. Mm -hmm. Did you use many um, tools, training implements, um, roller bar or anything like that? Early on, early on, not so much. Um, I started getting into that, you know, as, as I was more um, early 20s, I suppose. But rings, bars, uh, bags, all that stuff is used for sure. Yeah. Yeah, very simple. You know, I was, um, I was always working like labor jobs. You know, I carried furniture and swung a pickaxe for 12 hours. So I wasn't coming home to lift weights. It wasn't going to happen. Um, so that didn't really, really enter my world until a little bit thereafter. I started getting into the kettlebells when I quit yeah. working the furniture and movers and all that type of jazz. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's your weight training right there. That's physical it, training. Anyway. It really you can't, was. You yeah. can't beat that that top sort of work anyway that's just physical strength and not only that because it's so yeah. awkward it's it's kind of functional strength training isn't it yeah i mean i've, I've been getting hired by farmers to remove boulders out of their fields since i was 12. <laughs> we'd, we'd walk along the tractor and just scoop up boulders out of while they're tilling the fields so, i mean labor and, and functional strength has always been a part of my world yeah but, yeah i've never had a desk job in that labor so i I had to do the the gong fu a little bit, you know, mindful because I was beat up already from the day. Yeah. yeah. You know, come beat up from the kung fu for another five six hours, sleep for four or five hours. And then go to work. Yeah. 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 Too many years doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so how did um how so how did um the whole juk lam thing kind of pan out for you from that point up until now? Yeah. So. So we started off um, through through Sifu Rick. I started le like meeting uh, Louis Jackman in Philly, and he would come out to our way, so I'd get exposed to his system. The uh, same as with uh, Jin Fun Mak, he was kind of a influence, I suppose, uh, early on. You know, Rick had gone and trained with him and did what I was doing, where you know he'd go out and find these teachers and then bring them back to his school. Right. Uh, so we had influences from a few different lines, um, and those are just the two main that I really kind of dove into their methodology. Um, yeah. Those are two names that we, we hear quite a lot of, especially with regards to um, uh, Jup Lam in the US is uh, Louis Jackman and, and Jin Fu Mark. Um, more around sort of Jin Fu Mark, but you don't really hear much about Louis Jackman that in terms of uh, reading, reading wise, in terms of, of a big name. So, how 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 did that kind of relationship happen? And was he very was it same lineage? Did it all come from um, um, Lam? All came from Lam. Yeah. yeah, all came from Lam. Um, my understanding is Jin Foon and Louis were like training partners back in the day. And you know when when Jin Foon Mark went to Minnesota, Louis was in um, I think he was in Kentucky for a while, and eventually that group is in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they were they were just like the I, don't know, I guess you could say maybe the openest of the of that old guard teacher. Um, yeah. They they both kind of made a name for themselves in that regard, and their groups kind of grew. Um, so it, it was a very natural progression, I suppose. Does um, does Louis Jackman Roach. have a have a um, a lineage still functioning in in the states? Is are there is it, are there schools that follow his kind of teachings? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Scattered around, much like what. I uh, you're not going to find them on a corner lot, but you're going to find little groups that have their training place. And, you know, some folks are quieter than others, but yeah, they're definitely active. Philly has a good, uh, good group of guys out there. Uh, Tennessee's got some guys that trained his old line. Uh, so yeah, they're definitely around. You just kind of got to poke your nose and, and see what's yeah. what. Mm -hmm. Do you find, are there many differences or, or, is the fundamentals the same and it's just flavor is slightly different the fundamentals absolutely the same it's seek and destroy it's 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 destroy whatever comes in front of you that's not going to change um yeah. my my view of louis was he he seemed to be a little bit more fiery you know he, he a little more i don't want to say more aggressive but you could maybe see that from the outside mm. 
but when it came down to it, it you know, it's, it's all the, the same teachings of Lam. You look at the, the actual Daolu that they do in, you know, like their Sambo Jins, there's more similarities than differences. You know, how many times you hit, things like this. Yeah. But yes, they are two peas in the, of the same. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just, it is fascinating when you've got people that are so, like they've come from the same lineage, they've trained together and you see slight differences. Fundamentals are the same, but that little flavor, it's, it's the thing that the preferences of the individual that have, that come to the fore for them and they're through yeah. their teaching but the the you know the bulk of it the uh, essence is the same isn't it absolutely absolutely and that that kind of just fit together for it you know uh they, they've all got their their flavors yeah their attitudes, but at the, at the same time it's you know it's too clown you know yeah if um if you could describe in your own world in your own words how do you how do you view um your style of Southern Madness in terms of the method and the training? Oh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I have gotten, I've gone through phases and stages of the training, you know, mm. uh, early on it was, you know, I didn't, I didn't care what anything was called. I didn't care any of that. It was just, you know, like how does a hammer fist work? How many ways does a hammer fist work? Yeah. Uh, now I've gotten much more technical with my, in that regard, you know, I'm, way more keyed into you know the why and the how of how it all plays out you know the body mechanics the intent um things to that degree um it's hard to say man you know yeah. i i feel like going Fu is has got some special characters to it but everybody does that puts in the time and effort and that's the key is you put the time and effort in you've got something uh, yeah you yeah. yeah. make the discoveries Yes. You know, no matter how long you've been training, the regular if you train regularly and drill things, it's the repetition as well on that we, we kind of love to hate, but it, it's that's where you make the discoveries. And it and it like you say, it changes year on year. You know, your yeah. own training it will it changes with your own development. Yeah. It? Dambo Jin have been doing for twenty five years and it's still mind boggling. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, it's just that's that, you know. Same, you know, never the same, never the same. You see, each time is different. It's how you feel, the emphasis, um, and just the feeling becomes different, you know. Just many, many layers. Layers. Imperceptible. Yeah. Too deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks it looks simple from the from the, the layman's eyes, you know. Yeah. But yeah, if you're not practicing Sambo Jin every day, you're not going to understand it. You know, and that's fault a lot of people in the martial art you know they they want the good stuff but you know the good stuff <laughs> that, yeah and, w and walk past the good stuff to get to what they think is the good stuff yeah, you you can tell in seconds who's put in the, the stance work and you know things to that degree you can just tell yeah for sure and in terms of um power generation for you now how do you see that what do you see as the main method for that in your own practice well, it's a, it's going to be a combination of the float, sink, swallow, spit, you know, the, that's the main engine of, of the, the Southern arts, Pac May and the Mantis, they mm. share it. it. So it's going to be that combination, you know, the, how do you sink and float? How do you sink and spit? So on and so forth. And you put them together. Um, so in that, it's going to be very, very similar. A um, couple of different ways that you can express it. I mean, you know, based on what shape your hand is, you've got like heavy hand, you've got the, you've got the springing, uh, you've got like ghost hand technique, you know, like, you know, there's no way you're going to kind of grab smoke. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the main driving forces that can be applied to any shape that you uh, develop them with, you know. Um, I don't know if that answers. Mm. Oh, great. How, how do you... um? How do you see through your own practice? How does it feel that the difference or the similarity between the buck me and the the jug lump that you do? Yeah, so you get to the get to the end result, and there it's the same thing. You know, uh, an arrow fist is an arrow fist. Uh, the intent, I suppose, is what's really different. You know, I've heard it say that the the juk lump in the middle of the circle trying to fight out and the Pac May is maybe from the outside trying to fight in. 
Um, so in that regard, like, you know, the, the Mantis is going to utilize more of the, you know, repetitive strike, like a little Tommy gun. Mm. Uh, the the Pac May is going to be more like a, a 12 gauge, you know, just clack, clack, you know. Um, so there's going to be a little bit more of an emphasis, but they're going to explore both methods anyway. So, you know, I, I really got into the, the Pac May because it, it fit my, my fiery energy. And in that regard, it was, you know, brought me right back to the beginning in 95 when there was the, the Pac May influence to our training through Uncle Jack Moy. Um, and so it seemed very natural to play these two together. Mm. The geometry, very much the same. The horse, it's the same. The float, sink, swallow, spit, it's the same. But there's, you know, maybe the Pac May is going to use a little bit more of the, the C spine. Yeah. Mm. Say that the mantis isn't going to use the C spine, but maybe it's going to use the hips first. Yeah. Like, um, so your, your um, mantis stance, you kind of keep upright, straight back, curve the C ra horizontally rather than vertically, you know. You yeah, yeah, the shoulder blades. Yeah. Yep, and then you, you can dance the, you know, the 50% forward, 45 to the back, and then, you know, from there you can play those variables forward yeah. and back. Uh, so that's all the same, you know, that 12 to 24 inches wide, and, you know, heel to toe ratio. Um, that's definitely a good foundation to start with. Yeah. That structure's kind of in, in minor moder uh, alterations or mi minor differences, but it's the, the, that's the fits most of the Hakka arts. Yeah. There you know, are I, I, think, I think the Pac May might use a little bit more of the side, you know, the side stance a little bit more. Um, things to, but, you know, brother arts, sister arts, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And from um, uh, from a, a drop lungs perspective, um, what's what does your what does your curriculum look like? Um, uh, ha, like when you teach students now, do you have a a set curriculum that you have uh, planned out for them? Yeah, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, and I I, I wrote out um, a pretty decent what I thought was a pretty decent curriculum. It kind of goes through. Uh, Clusters, you know, so you, you, know, you start off with your basic foundation, you know, and in mm. that regard, I'm going to find out if you're even here in three months, you know, we're going to, we're going to do all, you know, basic kickboxing training, you know, learn yeah. basic stuff, coordinate the body, strengthen the body. And that's the time when we do all the, the footwork. Uh, from there, you know, it's, it's Sambo Jin right away. You know, we, we have a, a very strict and we're just walking the line, walking the line over and over again. Yeah. Uh, start right away on the chai sal, you know, just basic shapes, you know, like, so the circle would be one of the first ones we do. Yeah. Uh, bridge as well. Um, these, you know, and then just scaffolds up, you know, uh, you start learning some of the uh, san sal aspects of sambo jin. Because uh, in my understanding, sambo jin is not one form. There's, there's a handful of sambo jin, and that, that dictates, you know, maybe a slight change in the footwork, maybe a slight change in how many times you hit. You know, you see in the, the you get funan to a view to a funan or a funan funan view. You know, so each of the Sambo Jins should address these so the students can actually understand what it is that they're doing instead of just throwing arms around and, you know, trying to look. Yeah. Very, so, very important, yeah. Scaffold in that regard. Um, as you get going with, practice and you've been around and you're developing yourself will then expose the value of the deep plot that comes in the sambo gin and yeah. I think you just layer it in layer it in um you know maybe one or two forms a year but the rest of it's going to be all jongs and all um you know free play toy style sans style things like this wow and you know there's there's no end result in kung fu it's just a, it's a continual process yeah it's yeah. like most, most mantis schools I know, there's not a belt system. It's just, uh, it's, it's student, it's student. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you just train, that's it, you just Time. train. Yeah. Time. Yeah, and then, um, so if you, you kind of do that, that's your curriculum. Do, do you do, um, have you got specific Qigong stuff that you do? Yeah, there's, a, there's quite a bit, man, soft and hard, you know, so you've got the, 
you know, the iron gongs and things like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, as well as the, the we call regulating, you know, where you're just kind of trying to work on the, the cotton body and, the, you know, the feeling of the joints opening and closing, breath. I mean, it's all breath. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, there's absolutely separate drills that you're going to do. Some are very martial in application, you know, hardening the body, closing, all this type of stuff. Um, but then, there, you know, you got to reverse it. You can't just do one, you know, and that's, it's kind of a reality, you know, for the longest time, I only practiced that golden bell stuff and you, you could feel it, you know, you start, you know, you're constantly like, ah, where's the energy, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's it. Um, and that was really one of the most valuable things that Master Mark imparted to me was, you know, how to settle it back. Mm. Um, yeah. Keep that fire contained. It has to be that balance. Yes. It has to be yeah, the balance, like, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few gongs, man. There's, I mean, I could, I could probably think of more than a dozen patterns that you would do with breath work, um, sitting or standing. You know, there's more than that, I'm sure. Um, so that, that becomes pretty extensive. Uh, in my school, as you as you have proven yourself to be around and actually interested in training, and you're not just there to collect, uh, we'll pair we'll pair forms with the gongs, you know. So you'll learn sambo jin, and then you'll learn some of the hay gongs that go with it, and uh, some of the recovery drills as well. And you know, we just keep working. do you do you um, do you teach the juglam the buck me and or Michuan or whatever, do you teach them separately or do you? Yeah, just... yeah, I'm not even teaching Michuan. No, I'm oh. more of a student than that right now. Okay. Um, I've taught some of the courtyard Tai Chi, like the 108, yeah. things like that. Michuan is a totally different animal. Um, so I'm, I'm totally still in the discovery. Cool. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely separate. I'm, I don't mix them. I don't mind if a student studies more than one of them, um, depending mm. on the student, I mean, if you're a if you're a scatterbrained, I might be like, man, you might not want to try and tackle too much. Yeah. One thing. Yeah. Uh, that's not always the answer people want, but you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree though. I think um, for most people, is it's better to get a solid foundation, solid grounding in just one yeah. specific art before you start to branch out. You know. Yeah, I, I think mm-hmm. I was I was a good 15 years in before I really started to explore any of the Tai Chi or any of that, mm. you know, uh, once we really dove into the, the Juke Lam, that's like it for a very, very long time. Uh, mm. try and under, you know, try and understand that. Uh, we would, we would cross train, but I wasn't doing it to learn, you know? Yeah. It's um, not learn their curriculum. I was doing it to learn for myself, you know? Yeah. 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 Cause something, I mean, once, once you're, you know, even in your journey of discovery, even if you haven't fully, you're fully kind of um, ingrained. It's not fully ingrained. Expo- being exposed to other stuff can help, like you said before, it can help inform what you're doing. You know, it helps to explore a little bit about, you know, what you feel and how you train. And um, yeah. How did you um, end up meeting Master Mark and what was that like? Yeah, so in. Uh... 2007, I, I left uh, school. I moved out of the area. Um, and then it was about a year or two went by when I was just, you know, I was just training myself. I was working. Uh, I had a little goat farm that I was working with. And, you know, so my, my energy kind of went there for a little bit. Um, at that time, that's when I was finding like David Welther up in Madison and, you know, training with those guys. Um, eventually, I, that Master Mark was still active and that kind of shocked me because i i didn't know um so i reached out and i i just sent them sent a message up there and some of his students contacted me back pretty quick and within two or three days i borrowed a car and i drove to minnesota and um yeah that opened you know and i've been training with those guys ever since um you know uh, you had to go through that whole process, like, who are you? Who'd you learn from? You know, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, I kind of, you know, showed that I wasn't there for any reason other than the love of the art. Mm. Uh, he opened the door and we just started practicing and training. You know, Master Mark was old at the time. You know, he was in his early 80s. Right. So I'm really glad that I had the foresight to, you know, go up there and see him. Yeah. Uh, from there, you know, two, three times a year from then on, I was up there visiting a couple days at a time 
Yeah. And did, how did that, um, did that change your training anyway? Or, uh, or Yes, uh, you know, I was used to a much harder hand. Um, you know, Dao was had, had more of the heavy hand aspect, so more of like, you know, magnets connecting. You know, I, I really into that pressure. Mm. And a lot of the guys up there were kind of the opposite. They like the, you know, the smoky aspect, like you're not going to grab me if you try. And, um, so, yeah, it was definitely different. It was a, a interesting experience. Uh, but in that regard, now it's, now it's been crossed, you know, so my footwork might have gotten lighter. Um, and I, I would like to think that, you know, I imparted, you know, root training and things to this degree. Um, but yeah, it was, it was different, but the same, you know, and again, it was just the energy. You know, like I said, I was, a, I'm a scrapper, you know, I've always been that way. And so a lot of folks think that my hand is, is, is very hard and heavy for Lam, uh, Lam style, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it wants, it needs to be functional, you know, in that regard. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And hammer fist um, needs to hammer fist needs to hammer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what was um what were some of the the kind of key i guess lessons that you you got from that time that you remember like were there any moments where you were like aha or yeah yeah they're they're uh they're, they're a lot of wheel stepping and things like this so just a different different aspect of changing the angle you know i always like the, the triangle stepping and things to this degree you know more sharper angles yeah um they favored an exercise called five star up there. And so that's a, a lot of, you know, turning hands so that that was fun to kind of incorporate with what I've been doing that particular exercise. It's actually a form and a chi sao set. Uh, mm. So that's one of the, the first ones that master Mark imparted to me um, through his students. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it helped me to open up that ting sao, that listening skill. Uh, mm. it's, Instead of shouting with my hands, you know, you <laughs> a conversation, um, and and then learn when to punctuate that shout. And really, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the value of the the chi sao. You know, it's mm -hmm. if I can get my hands on you, or if you try to put your hands on me, they can be sharp or like oppressing based on you know just smothering actions. Uh, so training like that, um, it opened the door up to being you know less less forceful, but more determined. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds good. Richard Sonsu Meyer says, uh, I remember good times, good training. Yeah, Rich, Richard's my Pac-Man Mantis brother. All right. Uh, he lives, so he's a good dude. What's up, Richard? <laughs> and yeah. how, long, how, long, how long were you, um, were you in, that, in that training group for? I mean, I know you're still with them. Sorry, you were there from... That's still your training group, right? Yeah, yeah, man. I still, I still go up there and visit. Uh, up until now, I was going up there a couple times a year. Wow. My um, pop may see who lives in Minnesota, about an hour away from Master Mark's school. So, wow. you know, whenever I go up and see him now, I also drop in. So it's, I can't do one without the other. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all that way. And then, yeah, like so, so you, you started, you met your pop may see who at, uh, roughly the time that we went to first see Master Mark, mm -hmm. and how was that that meeting, and and why? How did how did yeah, that so he, he was at David Welter School, um, uh, or, Orthodox at the time. It was the Iron Pagoda, mm. um, and like I said, David and I we'd been you know cross referencing with each other for a good number of years. Um, so he told me that this Fox Masif was coming down, and that I should come check it out. And I did, and we became friends, you know, before he was my Sifu, uh, Sifu uh, Simon, he was, he was just my friend, you know, whenever I'd go to Minnesota, we'd go have coffee or, you know, just hang out and eat, and, you know, I would attend some of his workshops whenever I could. Um, basically decided a couple years in that, you know, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to explore this a little bit more tech. Uh, so I actually reached out to uh, Sifu Richard, and asked him if he would sponsor me and bring me to Steve Simon on an official basis. Uh, so that's what we did. Nice. Brought me in as an eighth generation at that point. Um, and that's really been my main focus for training wise, uh, learning that curriculum for the past few years. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, um, 
I guess all these uh, with the Pac May uh, and the Mitch one. Um, I guess, well, and you said this even before, you use those a lot to inform uh, your chuklam or your own your own practice, or even in the other way. Sometimes the madness can inform those styles as well. So, yes. what of um, I'm interested to 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 understand um, what sort of informing you've had from that. I mean, even from a, an understanding of an application or even understanding of a, of a concept or a principle. Yeah, so the, my Tai Chi early on was, it was basically the 108 movement and the Chen Man Ching set put to the Juke Lam structure. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, that was just the way I always played the Tai Chi, mm. um, which drove some of my friends nuts, but, you know, I thought it worked pretty nice because uh, they're very, very similar. You know, it's got that, that ebb and flow, the twist, very similar. Yeah. Uh, the Michuan is is that, but accelerated, you know, so it, it's got an even more of a loose set of springs, but it's still the same set of springs. Right. So the Pak Mei is how I always pictured the Iron Ox Mantis would be, you know, because you, you get the iron, but there's no Iron Ox around. So it's like, well, how do I know? Let's do the next best thing, Let's practice the, the uh, Pak Mei. Uh, so that was kind of my train of thought at the time. Uh, they, like I said, the, those two arts, the Mantis and the Pac may share a lot of the geometry, but the, the strategy of getting A to B is different. Uh. You know, the Pac may is going to use more of that crashing, you know, like just a, a barreling in while the Mantis might favor more of the slicing. Mm. Um, you know, so in that regard, you know, it's, it's not always appropriate to, to assume you can, you know, crash through somebody. You, you better have that, that ability to put the friction and utilize the cutting of the bridge at that point. Yeah. So they really just start to swim around each other. The Dao Lo is what's completely different. And the, what I really like about the, the Pak Mei is the forms, you can see the history of other arts directly in their forms. You know, you've got yeah. the dragon sets. It doesn't have anything like that. You know, there's no, there's no form that you can be like, ah, oh, well, that's, you know, from such and such. It's more of the techniques that are then put into the forms, you know, like the bridge is like a snake, you know, slithering around, but we're not going to try and look like a snake. Mm. Uh, there's no eagle claw sets in the mantis, but there's lots of eagle claw. Mm. Bay has the Ying Zhao set, so it's a different view of the old Shaolin history. Uh, I find that to be pretty fascinating. Yeah, that is, yeah. Mm. The of the mantis is definitely going to be more sophisticated and, and maybe Sibu Simon's just shaking his head at me right now but the, the sophistication of the chi sao is really the bread and butter of the mantis the the ability to follow here redirect uh, any part of the body upon contact and to me that's that's so much fun to train you know uh, based on various pressures, uh, there's many, many entries and holes that the human body can find and expose. Mm. So. Yeah, it's, um, they say contact, control, hit. Yeah, yeah, touch, oh, control, touch hit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mo, mo da, mo na da, right? So the <laughs> touch, control, hit. Yeah, yeah, so that, uh, that's uh, fundamental because as a, a bridging system, yes. that, from that, instant and people think it's a slow process like one two three but is it's not it's that instant of touching without yeah without thinking that the reactions through training that regular training right. it's how does, how does the becomes instinctual fit? yeah you know where, yeah. where do you go from a jitkun where do you go from a missed jitkun yeah so on and so forth and if yeah. you don't study the individual shapes you'll never understand how they can and, and shoot from each other. It's kind of like a, a roundabout in, in your car. You know, mm. you get about and you start turning and turning and turning. You can get stuck in the middle. That's chasing hands and that's thinking Chi Sao has no, no exit. But mm. if you see the off ramps, you know, yeah. now you can figure out how to get where you're going, which is yeah. your attacker. It's a bit, for me, for me it's a bit like uh, looking at, at forms, whatever the form is. But looking at the transitions between what people perceive as the movement, so 
you come to an end, you turn, and people switch off. They just think, oh, we've got to this point, now it's turn and do it again. But, you, but that transition, that turn, means something. Yes. And there's, there's stuff hidden in there as well. Yes. You just have to keep looking. So, yeah, I mean, you turn in the hand, where's the pressure on your hand? Where is the pressure on your hand to their arm or their shoulder, whatever? Don't just turn the wrist. You got to be feeling the differentiation yeah. of where you're touching. Yeah, and like the, the whole yeah. circle. You may, you may not even complete a circle. It's right. Each part, right. each, each kind of degree is uh, there's something there. You know, yeah. depending on angle, pressure, and position, and whatever. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's techniques in, in you know, our system. You know, you, in the form, you're doing circling hand, and obviously that's uh, that can be used as attacking, as clearing, or whatever. But you don't have to do the whole thing. It yeah, might be just one little section, one little contact, a little degree. You've created the window of opportunity, uh, an opening, and you you know, and things are not in. They're not in two dimensions either. Everything's spiraling in 3D. So, like, if you know, you begin commence an attack, it starts here, but then it ends up further forward where the where your victim is. Yeah, you spiraling know. is that's the key. Yeah, always spiraling forward, always moving. Yeah. What's um, how many um, how many forms in in your lineage of of, of Juklam, Riley? Form um, in Juklam? Yeah. Um, There's got to be over 20 for sure, you know, and, and some of those are double being single and two man. So, oh, you know, gotcha. Uh, hmm. if, you were, if you were to combine all those together, you could probably count out over 30 forms uh, hmm. that have been acquired by me personally. Uh, uh, or some are very long. Uh, some are repetitive nature being that, you know, uh, five stars in Sambo for it, you know, so, but you put them, you take them apart and they're separate forms. Mm. You know, so yes, I uh, th there's there's a lot of forms in in Mantis, and uh, they all teach the the same thing from a different idea, a different angle. You know, mm. uh, mm. oh, uh, some have more emphasis on on crashing. Some are way more sensitive to uh, receiving and targeting. Some are for more of the the power strength. Uh, some teach you to strike repetitive skill. You know, so. How do you shoot the arrows? One hit, or you can do three. Mm. So they all highlight. You know, um, they're all very, very simple as far as you know. Uh, feet are mostly on the ground. You know, they line drills. You know, not a whole lot of crazy aerial and much of it. Although there's there's a couple, and you know, like Lao Sao had some fanciness to it. Mm. Uh, yeah, but there's quite a few, quite a few forms in in the Jupiter study. Again, coming from Louis and coming from Jin Poon. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize there was so many, to be honest. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. And he, these are drills that, like, you know, Louis, he, he wrote handfuls of these drills to help him pass. You know, like the ginger fist set. I, you know, it's like 15 moves or something like that. Wow. Uh, you know, just over and over, things like this that uh, have developed, I, I would imagine, mostly in the 70s, 60s. Uh, you know, like Jin Foon, he wrote a lot of the, the sets, but uh, we did the same thing. So, mm. yeah. Mm. That's fascinating. Do you um, have specific training to develop the short power? You've got the three power strike in, mm -hmm. in the form, you know, punch and then uh, Bill G and punch again or whatever, the way you described. Uh, is that to enhance the short power? Correct, correct. Uh, and then there'll be the, the various gongs that go with it. Uh, just rocking the arrows, spit the fingers, pull back, rock the arrows, spit the yeah, fingers. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, you might do that and nothing else. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Turn that aspect into you know, a lot of dynamic tension. We was doing uh, it today, actually. Myself <laughs> and Mish were training earlier on. And we've nice. got a, a little drill called uh, G-Lick where you, you know, you fingers out, draw back fingers out draw back and just keep yeah. doing doing this and over and over change change leg do it again change leg do it again and, you, and there's other things you can do with that so yeah very um similar overlap with a lot of the training i think yeah i mean every form should be taken down into one move at a time and you know so you do the opening hand 
and nothing but the opening hands until you're strong and fortified that you could enter into a situation without crumbling. Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, and everything has to be broken. That. And it, so it, in that regard, you can find even more Qigong, you know, because you've got the Qigong from the form and then you've got the Qigongs that kind of accompany, you know, uh, yeah. all the, the mantis brush wings and stuff like this. Yeah. Not so much used in the opening of our sets, but, you know, that's another one that we've been doing since the beginning of time. Yeah. You know? And so that's, you know, how do you want to play these types of movements? Do you want to tension with them or do you want to let that tension go and just go through the precise range of motions? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's like with, <clears throat> with a lot of the drills, you say break them down, even if it's just the opening, sometimes you just don't you don't have get that understanding until you've done the repetition over and over again it's only then when you start to feel it maybe feeling a bit tired that you actually suddenly it feels different yes. and if you only ever do it once or, or a few times you, you can never get to that stage of making that discovery mm -hmm. that i mean you can you can learn a thousand forms but if you don't have sambo jin they're all empty you know, or Pac May, if you don't have the Jigpo, it, all those other forms are empty. Yeah. You know, it, so, you know, you get those that want to train once a week and each week learn something new. I'm not the teacher for you. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just not the way it is. You know, my goal is to slow everybody down. I mean, the world is so crazy fast. Mm -hmm. Everything moves so quick. We need, we need to slow down and appreciate that, that the training is the process. You know, there, there's, no, there's no finish line. So relax, enjoy, and in that regard, simplify. Yeah, you know? mm, I like that, yeah. Lao Sao is an incredibly complicated form, you know? Uh, but if you break it down piece by piece, it becomes a functional form. And that's that a lot of folks miss with the Dao Lo of the sets. You know, uh, some people say that, too many forms is just to have student retention but man i think that it, it's it's more of an advanced syllabus if you have uh these principles from various angles exposed to you and that's what i think master mark was such a genius when he put this stuff together uh because it's it's just uh it's a rinse and repeat from various angles you know uh, stimulation and touch can happen from uh, all sides we yeah. better learn you know? Yeah, and it goes. I, I I agree with you. It goes beyond that kind of simplicity of oh, you have that many forms just for retention because you know the the process of learning gets you ready as you as you go through the system and as you get to those. I don't want to say the term high levels, but to the point where you've trained and you've reached a point where you're ready to take this next piece and ready to enhance your your ability and your understanding of not just yourself, but the system and what it has to offer. Um, and there are forms that are designed for that um, and concepts suddenly change. So yeah. you can't, if you don't have a foundation in place, getting to try and understand what is up here, you're, meaningless. No point. it's meaningless. It's meaningless. Yeah. You just, oh. It's superficial. It's superficial. You're, you can get the moves out of it, but it hasn't got the, the foundation to make it powerful or or you know yeah the principles behind your movement so so even those different forms if you like you say you don't regard them necessarily as a higher level they're definitely a, it's a different facet mm. a different facet so it gives you a different perspective which can deepen your understanding if not make it you know yeah but then it, it it takes a whole as you said earlier on it takes training and it takes going through the, the, the break, breakdown of, of certain individual parts, understanding them and questioning and researching and testing. And then when you finally get, as you, you progress, some, some things will be like, oh, I already know this, or actually my body works in that way to make me understand that better. Or you get to a point where you're like, whoa, what is this? This is something completely new. What, yeah. is, what is going on here? You know? Which we've had a few. Yeah. 
So let's um let's talk a little bit about um uh where where you are now. So you you've got your you've got your school, um simply simply kung fu. Uh, um and I know you've been there a year and you, but I mean you've had your school for a while and you know I've been following your 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 journey uh since we connected uh, from many 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 years ago. Um so, I read about the time that I left uh, and started going off on my own. It was uh, I didn't have an internet in 2007, 2008. Mm. So right around there, uh, when when I found out about the greater community. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how um how is um how is getting into teaching been for you? I mean, because uh, you've been teaching for quite a while now, um, and um, a lot of things I see with your training. Um, you do, I mean, you, you're, you're super, super, you put a lot of emphasis on, on the basics, like you said, on the foundational aspects, but then you like the functionality of everything you do, um, which is really interesting. Can you talk a little bit bit more about that in terms of so, so teaching, is, teaching is like the next step for any dedicated student, right? Like I always tell people, and I, I've had them ask, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to join, uh, whatever art yoga or martial art so I can teacher. And it's like, nah, man, you can't do it like that. It's gotta, it's gotta be organic. As far as I can tell, you have to be a teacher in order to teach. And it's, I'm, I'm not sure if you can really learn that skill. Mm. Uh, but once you start forcing your to the point to where you have to explain things in a way that somebody can understand it, uh, really opens your eyes because you know i've spent many many hours and days obsessing over minute little details of body structure and mechanics so i can better explain it the next day yeah uh, to that uh, i've skyrocketed my gong fu for sure you know um, i first taught in in super rick school i was in a, a student instructor there for uh maybe two maybe three years um, as like an official status there. Um, so I started getting a taste of like structured training at that point. Um, now it's, it's a life passion. You know, the idea of teaching these arts um, has kind of gone full time for me. You know, I've, I've got uh, kids, I'm a stay home parent. You yeah. know, so that's one of the things that has allowed me to fully engulf my time with, with Kung Fu and, and to that degree because I could do it out of my home. Yeah. I attempted that whole have a school thing for a few years and nah, it just wasn't for me. That's when we bought this place and happened to have uh, some of that. Um, but teaching is definitely the, the next step for a, a dedicated student. It's actually probably one of the secrets, but it's a complete failure if you don't put in the time to understand what it is that you're doing. Hmm. So, um, it's kind of a catch-22 if you, if you look at it wrong. Um, so yeah. Wow. And and how do you um, how do you 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 kind of teach that functionality um, of of Jok Lam to to your students, or how do you even approach that yourself? Same way I learned in the early days. You know, right. I, I do it the same way, man. My my students will do the horse. They'll do the horse with no hands. They'll do the horse. With... And as they start getting coordinated, we'll start doing uh, something we call Samda drills, uh, touch control hit. Right. Um, you know, like I'll give you a, a set of three techniques to use and I'll give you uh, two or three ideas of how I'm going to enter. And wow. we repeat that until it's, it's on point. Right. Mm. This is contact. This is not pulling. You, you have to make contact. You know, you, you have to do so with control. You know, I say control, don't pull. Because, you know, when you're, when you're gauchoing to somebody, I want that gaucho to touch. Right. But it doesn't really have to fire. Right. So that's a little bit of a skill that it's hard for some folks to learn. And, you know, then the training gets rougher than it needs to be, at mm. least in the days. Um, as students start really understanding the, the dance style, I start sparring with them relatively quick as a student. Wow. Uh, yeah. Where it's, you know, like, I want them to be able to leave my door and protect themselves on the way to their car if they need to. Right. Yeah. That's my goal. 
Um, when we do form training, and I, I definitely teach the forms, uh, we do the and we break those down into each functional, you know, so if you sidestep in the form, we're going to break down just that sidestep and see how many ways it's going to work. And then I'm going to watch to see if it comes out spontaneously in sparring, you know, and students start like recognizing things that work. I start pointing out that, hey, that's what you're doing. This is where it's from. Pieces together that away. Right. Uh, the two man forms are, are brilliant for that because it's a great introduction and a great way to um, just keep polish, you know, because if, if we're doing these drills and we kind of know what's happening, but the energy is always changing, mm. you know, you know um, around the 2007 mark, you know, when I, when I did, wasn't in a school and I wasn't really teaching, me and my training partners got a hold of your guys' 36 point two man form. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, so our, our two man forms are very similar to what you guys would. You know, some of them are more, you know, for the, just the hitting, and some of them are, are focused just on the chi out. Mm. In sparring, I want to see those blend. Right, you know, got you, yeah. The driving principles of any of these arts that, that I focus on is yin yang. Mm. You know, yin yang. Not yin and yang, yin yang, mm. right? So, As a single idea. Yes, and, and that mm. has to apply. And, you know, like some students can get it right away based on the jongs and some have to go back and, you know, recognize just one move, how it jumps into another. And then over time, we start to pressure it more and more and more until mm -hmm. it becomes instant reflex. Um, when students no longer react, but respond, you know, like, I don't want you to react because what if you react incorrectly? I want you to respond to the stimulation of somebody coming towards you. Gotcha. And that's yeah. Done intelligently. And mm -hmm. that's what you get from the repetition of the jongs, the forms, the, you know, gong fu. Because if you, if you practice once a week and you do your sambo jin, but you never do your sambo jin just in your head, while you're sitting there doing nothing, are you really practicing sambo jin? Mm. You have to get this so deep into your, into your being for it to open up and mm. all the forms are like that as far as i can tell yeah <laughs> same mm. as just walking into a shop you know queuing up in a shop and just practicing little moves which is what we all did you know it just never leaves you it's there all the time isn't it you don't fire but you only <laughs> got a hone <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. do you do do you do much in the way of um of uh Conditioning, Riley. Uh, conditioning in terms of limb hitting uh, and separating each of those those body yeah. body parts. So and that goes right back to how I was originally taught. You know, okay. back when I was fifteen, um, ah, punch control hit, uh, chi sao, chai sao, da sao, which would be the hitting, and then san sao. Right. So da sao would be you know the the three star arm hitting and the gao choys to the palms and the backhand. Yeah. This has to be the person, you know, like all the tools is for when there's nobody around. Right. The yeah. Conditioning has to be person to person. Yeah. And that way you can get proper. <coughs> uh, this is also where you learn to control and not pull your power. Mm. So the idea of, of learning that body conditioning, that striking is teaching you how to hit and how to take the hit. But it's also teaching you appropriate energy is what's required. I mean, if I'm, if I'm walking down the street with my family and some drunk asshole comes and just starts causing some trouble, maybe it's appropriate to break his nose, but maybe not break his clavicle, mm. you know? So how hard do you hit him with still hitting? You know, there's yeah. always that escalation that you should be able to do. And Dasa is going to teach you that. Stronger, yeah. you, you can learn to hit harder, hit more precise, what to hit, and it opens the door that way. So really the four main pillars outside of forms, because all of this comes out of the forms, would be your chi sao, your sticking, your listening, your adhering. Yep. Your chi sao, that's all your grinding and your, your fortifying your bridge and you know, your refusing energy. Uh, that's the hitting and physical conditioning. Uh, yep. And then the sense, and that would be like more targeting. 
because San Sao is going to incorporate these other things. Yeah. You know, it's just teaching you more of a precise follow through to get to the intended target. How do you get past the arm? Yeah. You know, Again, it's just that drilling, that drilling of the technique just to see how your body reacts and how you can make someone else react. Right. You know, if you're deflecting them and they don't move, you've got some work to do. Yes, you should know right away from touch yeah. dealing with right yeah. away. And that yeah. that's the thing. That's your if you can if you can make contact with somebody, mm. you should relatively <laughs> understand their center of gravity. Mm. And that's that's what you want for that close in. Yeah. You know, whether whether you're in a clinch or you're you're working more of the long bridge, that doesn't ever change. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing right. about a lot of these two man, two man sets, the two man sets are working exactly those, those powers and concepts that you mentioned. Um, yep. but also teaching you how to use a sound style, um, but also where to hit and how to hit. So, uh, an example from, from my experience was, uh, when training with Stephen Paul and we were doing, um, just a, 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 a a, a set where you're using so and so and then you're hitting uh you're hitting the rib and he's like you have to hit the rib here in this method and it does this and it causes this and i said well we have to condition and we have to do this he's like yeah so you're sitting there and you're taking this hit but you're using it with the so and so and and redirecting and moving and and and, and taking that hit as well but the, the understanding is you know if you're if you're fighting someone whether they're skilled in kung fu or they're skilled in a certain in a certain style they're going to hit you in a certain way to have a certain reaction um against your normal average person that hasn't trained that's going to be you know that hit is going to cause something but for someone else you've got to you either hit down press use your rib or you hit with the phoenix eye and accordingly so and a lot of it is to bypass some of their their own training whether they've got like gum gong or whatever so it all all comes together you know, so it, it, some of those drills are sensitivity. They're teaching you angles. They're teaching you things, and you're doing the conditioning at the same time. Um, yeah. Yes. yeah, multifaceted for sure. Yeah, because yeah. you can never just assume. I mean, a, a palm to the forehead is probably going to work against the great majority of people. But what if? Yeah, uh, always, always. In a fight, you don't want to think what if. You know, no. because you know, you're going into a fight, you're you're the you're the winner. You I mean you're gonna you're gonna destroy. But yeah. what if? <laughs> you know, and the, the that's, answer that's to that is is don't stop and admire your work. Just carry on until just carry they, on, yeah. Carry on until they stop. <laughs> well, that's what the poem says. You don't stop until you know. Yeah. You yeah. Don't yeah. Yes. yeah. You just keep going. Um. So what about um. Uh, traditional stuff in terms of weapons. Uh, what weapons do you have? Um, yeah, uh, weapons are in there. Um, staff, uh, butterfly swords. Uh, uh, I learned some tanfa, uh fan set. Uh, again, this all this would have stemmed uh, not necessarily just from the Jupe, that early group. So sure. I believe the fan came from Uncle Jack Moy. So I believe that's Bach May. Same with the tanfa. Yeah, the tanfa is a bit. Yeah, as far as um, Juklam weaponry, precise, it's a, a staff, a butterfly. Um, I know there's a broadsword. I've never practiced it. Um, tiger fork, I haven't practiced much of it. Mm. But staff, there's three, four staff sets that you can, you can find out of the Juklam. Mm. Uh, that's, that was really my main focus for a very long time was just simple, man. I wasn't into swords. Uh, things like that. I actually, I always thought it was kind of dorky in this day and age. Like I'm a practice swords, you know, um, <laughs> it wasn't until maybe the last, uh, I don't know, 10 years that I really saw how it, that opens up your empty hand. Mm. But uh, the Pac May has much more weaponry as far as Sifu Simon's um, teaching. So mm. that's, maybe I'll get into those weapons a little bit more as I sure. dive into that aspect of the training. But as far as Duke Lam, it's butterfly and its staff are main focus. Uh, is, this, is, is the staff your favorite favorite weapon to train overall? Oh, yeah. By yeah. far, staff and more so the straight sword nowadays. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. And that, again, that comes from the Pak Mei and from Sifu uh, Laoshi Rodell. Um, he's really been helping me appreciate the, the straight sword techniques. Um, but I never learned a straight sword out of Juke Lam. I'm mm -hmm. looking, so if anybody out there has some good straight sword sets from Juke Lam, I would love to talk. Um, I haven't. We've got, uh, we've got one in Chao Gao. We can, we can, we can. <laughs> so, yeah. I would be interested in checking that out too. Yeah, we've got one in Chao Gao. Um, and how about, so we've talked about the, the kind of martial side. What, uh, what have you done in terms of the, the medicine and healing side? Have you done anything in? Basic sit down, man. I am, man. I'm a high school dropout, man. I haven't been in school since I was very young. Yeah. Uh, so I do not have any formal education in any of that type of shit. Uh, but I am, I am full blown self taught when it comes to um, local herb craft. Um, yeah. Wild harvesting. Um, I'm really big in uh, permaculture and organic farming. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, some good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I studied Ditta with uh, Sifu Rick for many years. I helped him make Ditta two or three in the morning, man. We'd be, we'd be grinding herbs. So um, a, lot of my, a lot of my bruise formulas and tendon formulas would have stemmed from him. Yeah. So those would have probably come, those would have come from Uncle Mo. Uh, I know there's a, a Louis Jackman has a uh, Ditta formula that way. Um, so yeah, a lot of my Jiao training initially came from there. That's where the interest came. Yeah. Uh, from there, Sifu Simon, my Pak Mei Sifu, he's a very skilled herbalist and um, Chinese medicine doctor. So I've been mm. picking his brain and he's been providing me some interest in that. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. how you have to use it, man. I know a lot of people think it's oh. snake oil, you know? Um, and oftentimes while, well, you know, cause I mean, I've got some jowls back on the shelf here that I made eight, nine years ago, completely yep. still sealed. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. I started doing that, you know, just and every year I try to make a gallon or two. Um, I generally give it freely to students in class, you know, um, but I, I encourage them to have a bottle at home. Um, kind of thing like that. I mean, you, you have to have it. Otherwise, I'm just not going to condition it with you. Yeah, you know, you, I, I think uh, people kind of under, underestimate it, but Yes. Using it, uh, uh, you know, regularly when you're training, when you're doing some heavy training. I mean, even even the internal pills. We, you know, we've got pills for internal training. Doing really heavy body conditioning, it, it's wise to, to look after yourself. Yes. Because the and body's not used to kind of just taking, taking this regular, regular beating. So you, if you heal it well, you, you're going to give yourself less problems in later life. You know. Yes. Yes. I mean. When I, when I was 15, we would do four hours of, of just crashing bridge drills with the sand sow. Mm. And then I would come back the next day after work. If it weren't for the ditta, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, like, you, you got to like pain to do these arts. You, you kind of yeah. have. Yeah, you got to make them. Perverse. There is a perverse bit to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so important to take care of your, you don't want to destroy your, 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 you know, you don't want to have bone bruises. Those are not good for you. They can, they can actually ripple out. Yeah. So, uh, fundamental Tuina massage is something I've studied and trained. Uh, yeah. Along with the Ditta, um, I, I really got into the local craft Ditta, like what herbs grow naturally around here. Yeah, that will wise. Yeah. Wise, you know, there's, you know, yeah. many of the, the gals are, are based on, you know, herbs that are readily available in, in China and, and that's yeah. why they use them but if you had the, um, the herbs that are growing in the west in, in the UK in, in the states they would have used them as well you know arnica oh, is a very very good one single use for bruising it's, it's an incredible um, uh, herb for that so um, some jow is just for energy you, you drink them like wine uh, and yeah you know yeah that. yeah you, you know, can make training kind of formulas that are, yeah. that are good for healing and and opening up and tonifying all the meridians internally. You know, Alex and I are, are really getting into this this uh, this area quite a bit in terms of formulas, uh, internal and external, uh, uh, pre-training, post-training, um, looking at different formulas and and uh, and I guess being guinea pigs. <laughs> some, <laughs> some of them, some of them are high, some high guinea high pigs. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, I know. Richard Richard says Riley makes good jiao. Ask him about growing and preparing herbs. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we have it. You know, um, 
Uh, a lot of people, they, they put like bugs and lizards and snakes in their that die. And I, I shake my head at that. I'm like, man, that's, that's a selling point to a certain class of people. And I don't think that that should be. Um, you want good resins. You want good fresh herbs. You want uh, proper water ratios. Uh, some, some need to be cooked. Some don't. You know, yeah. uh, realistically, time is the greatest uh, asset, just like training your, your forms. Your dittal wants time to brew. Yeah. Uh, and, and nutrition is, is just as important, man. If you're, if you're eating McDonald's every day, your bruises are going to take longer to heal. You yeah. know, but if, if you're eating, you know, more wholesome food, you know, uh, and I'm not saying be like super strict, but you should be mindful. 100%. Uh, yeah you put in your body you know uh topically or internally you know. yeah. so do you grow do you grow your your herbs yourself as well of what you can and as many as i can um, like i said we just moved into this place a year ago but it's sitting on an acre and we're we're slowly in the process of removing the grass <laughs> and yeah. and trying to turn the whole thing into a, a, a learning garden is my goal um in which case yeah i'll have much more I, I seeded some, uh, you know, licorice root, and I've seeded some uh, Chinese skull cap and things like this already. But yeah, my new, my new place is very much in the infancy stage right there. So sure. it, sure. hit me back four or five years, and we'll see what we have growing. Cool. Hmm. And until then, I got to still go to Chinatown or find a, an online supplier for you know a lot of the resins and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, just some, uh, a couple of questions we, we, we tend to get a lot of, um, what is your favorite form and why? Uh, looking at Juglam is Sambo Jin. Yeah. So I'm 1000% Sambo Jin. And again, Sambo Jin is not one form. So there's the like Sambo Jin short form where there's no middle ground. It's just, it's arrows turn, arrows close. Uh, then you get like the second stage Sambo Jin where you start having a middle section. Um, mm. And that's where you, you start seeing this kind of stuff happening, right? Where you get these, these turning hands. Yeah. Uh, there's several dance styles like that. Some of them deal with the Gao Choi. Some of them deal with the straight fist. Some of them have more of a, a turning lop. So Sambo Jin takes it forever. Um, from there, I think one of my, my favorite sets after that would maybe be Lao Sao. Um, I really like the, the, the leaking hand fist or some called yep. loose hand. Um, and two man. Uh, and there's actually two of those forms, but they're actually one, put them together. Um, and, that's, and that's because that's, that's just got the, the broad scope of targeting, how to move. Uh, and it, like it says, the leaking, it's leaking, you know? So if somebody comes forward, how do you leak out of there without interrupting? Yep. So the idea of receiving in order to return, you know, I don't, let you know my my intention by pushing or pulling before I react. I want to I want to cause you to think something while I'm doing something else, and that's what Lao Sao is teaching. So that's a really good set. It's it's in my first tier of training, so I, I teach it alongside Sambo Jin uh, short form. Yeah, uh, but it's not a beginner set. You know, like I'll have students training that for a couple of years, and they're still figuring stuff out with it. Um, it's a very, very good one. That one comes from Master Mark. Uh, to my understanding, it's something that he put together. I've heard other people contradict that, but I don't, you know, I'm not a historian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So, so the, correct, the forms that you've got are the, the ones that you've practiced and collected over these from training with Lou Jackman and yeah, uh, and anybody and everybody from those two lineages that was willing to meet up and cross hands and mm. exchange. Yeah. Uh, if I liked it, if I if I comprehended it, yeah. if I, you know, I, I documented it and uh, put it into my curriculum. That's great. That's great. And it really is. I mean, what's great is is that this is this is your this is your personal journey. This is what mm. you've taken, what you've used, and and what you're passing on. Um, yeah. and then you still That's have. What they call it prairie mantis style because it's it's uh it's, it's unique to mine yeah you know? absolutely um what advice 
because we have a you know we, we've, we've got quite a big group and there are some some people that are, are still quite I guess new to Mantis or some that have, uh, have a, a couple of years what do you what advice do you have for uh, for those for, for those those practitioners beginners and and advanced students as well yeah uh, yeah low, lower your expectations and raise your standards uh, that covers everything you mm. know you can't expect to be good at kung fu unless you train kung fu uh, you can't be you can't be training kung fu unless you're really engulfed in it you know once a week is you can do it and you know i'm not saying that those people aren't martial artists but they're going to get once a week training benefits versus those that are training seven days a week, you know, uh, even if it's 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah doing something. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's an important point, actually. Yeah, that's an important point, Riley, that, that sometimes people, you know, haven't got the time to train for hours every day. They've got busy schedules, but if you can take 20 minutes out and do 20 minutes of quality training, it, it just keeps you stimulated. It keeps you going. And obviously you have to put the hard training in. You have to put the good time, um, time in as well. But sometimes it's just short bursts of quality time that you can do, in, which helps you think and develop. So the next time you train, you, you know, you're, you're taking the journey further. So it's an important point, I think. But and that, that, I think that, that same uh, principle, it goes to any skill, right? Whether it's as simple as yeah. learning learning how to use Photoshop or learning how to play the guitar or mm. learning 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 more about biology, you know, you're not any any skill set, uh, physical, mental, or whatever it is. Once a week is only going to get you so far, you know. Um, but uh, you know, like Riley said, it, make time, even if it's even if it's twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. Mm. Uh, that that daily. That daily consistency is the, uh, it, that's the secret sauce, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is. It really is. You know, and when your energy is up, train. When your energy yeah. is not up, then train the mental food. You yeah. know, read a book about it or, man, write your Kung Fu down. See if you can, see if you can your forms down and then, and see how that causes you to think about it. Yeah. Because you'll write it down today and not have a clue what it says next month. So then you'll rewrite. And True. I've been doing this since the very beginning. Um, now I've got stacks of notebooks that I've written ten times, trying to make it make more sense on yeah. paper. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. So funny you're you're saying this because Alex and I were we we just finished training. <laughs> we just finished training, and uh, we were just trying to remember some stuff. And I was like, oh, we really need to start writing these things down again." Yeah. Like, uh, cause it's so funny because I found um, some notebooks from twenty years ago. Yeah, where I'd written stuff about Sambo Jin and and some techniques and things like that, and we were just saying to ourselves, we were like, listen, we need to get back to this practice of noting things down as yeah. it's happening. And so, you know, we, you know, we've ordered some notebooks and some pens because it's just like, just do it and start yeah. doing, it, get back to it. So it's really, it's so funny that you mentioned this because we were literally just talking about it today. We you know, rely on the internet and the computers and it's great, man. I, I film almost every time when I train, you know, yeah. if, if I'm training, I'm filming so I can watch it later. Uh, mm. But I've also had computers completely disappear on me. And, you know, so if you're documenting your forms just on video, again, what if, you know, write it down, write well, it that's down. The, that's the thing. I mean, I, I've that notebook that I found 20 years old, fine, no problem. But if I try and find some of my old training videos from, 15 20 years ago i'm gonna have a little bit of a problem like you know unless i've got an old tape somewhere or whatever but yeah i you think can do it of, it can be done yeah it can be but for me i think the other video stuff is just a, a a reference of stuff that you've covered and that you've done that you if you check back on it you just oh how rubbish was that <laughs> or <laughs> more than likely or you were you oh, forget I that pattern I you'll forget that. certain you'll forget certain details but if you write totally. that, if you're right the, the video can, video can only get you so far right and and and, yeah. and i think this is the thing that you know you can watch something and you can it, it, it comes back to something see david said he said he said i don't mind if people people uh, who copy what i do he goes they can copy it 
but they can't they're, copy the power. He goes, they can't copy what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and what, yeah. what's actually going on. The, the, yeah. the, the concepts, the, the principles, the breathing, the experience, everything yeah. that has gone into him performing in that way. And, mm -hmm. it, and, and that's interesting as well, because uh, yesterday we were training with Super Paul and he showed us, he showed us something that we'd forgotten. And had I seen a video of it, I would have missed the, the key uh, detail of that movement, which was around the, the manipulation of the spine. I wouldn't have remembered that. But if it had been written down, I'd have been like, this now makes more sense to me because I've got the notes of my thinking and, and the things yeah. behind it. As opposed to, you know, obviously the film in terms of, you know, filming with, with explanation is great, right? You know, yeah, you can all, train all yeah. but, but I, I, I like the, I like the, the mention of writing things down. I think that yeah. is important. Um, Bring your notebooks to class, man. Hundred percent, and that's and that's write, try and develop the the skill of writing something that make, makes sense later on. You have to <laughs> bear in mind that it's is it, sometimes it's a bit abstract. It's a bit, you know, that you're not going to know what it means later on. So you have to try to make as put as much detail as possible. I mean, because you could you could see a, a a picture of somebody and a video of somebody you know making a position, but you have no idea the intent of what's in their head. That's you know? right. Is this yeah. Wu Sao or is this Chick Sao? Yeah. yeah. Shape, man. Yeah. Where's the shape going? You're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna get that unless you have you know uh, had it explained. Yeah. It has yeah. to be explained. Talk to us a little bit about how your training has changed, not changed, but sort of progressed uh, up to this point now. I know that um, now you're doing uh, a lot more exploration in terms of uh, training apparatus and um, training tools. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got, um, you know, especially now, you know, um, not very many people want to come out and, and, and push hands and things like this. So uh, tools become interesting, you know, um, I actually put kettlebells down when the lockdown started. Uh, I haven't done much of those at all. Um, I just don't want to get hurt. My family needs me. So high risk things like that, I set to the side. Um, mm. But we still get a lot of heavy bag training. I do a, I got a couple of wooden dummies that I've built. Uh, nice. with yeah. Arms. yeah. Those uh, have springs in them. That would be more for like chi sao and, and things like, and checking your angles, making sure you're not pushing with a floating elbow because it's going to come back around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then you've also got the stronger hard arms like you would see in the traditional um, the, the wooden man. Uh, but sometimes you pull those those short arms out and put a couple staffs in the holes. And now you're now you're fighting past the staff line. So uh, the wooden dummies can be used for um, mm. tools are great, people are better, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Le less uh People are less predictable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, less predictable, and you get you get a better cross feed, and you've got just better angles. You mm. know, uh, I don't want to fill my gym full of. Um, you know, I have uh, a dozen or so kettlebells, a couple heavy bags, uh, iron rings, and and brass bars. Uh, yeah. Bag, you know, uh, that's really that's that's all I ever need. Um, because everything else is going to be, you know, dynamic tension type training. You're going to be doing your, your, sure. your iron body qigong and, you know, horse stance and everything else is, is um, an adjunct, I suppose. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, rings and bars were all I ever trained with as far as weight can, you know, up until just the past, you know, six or so years when I, I started. Again, because I quit working the labor job so much. Mm. Um, but iron rings and, and the, the rolling bars. Man, it's bread and butter. Yeah, um, you know. So, and how has your how has your your practice changed uh, personally for you over the over the years? Yeah, I've um, I've definitely loosened up a little bit. I, I understand that um, you know a fight might not take thirty seconds, even though if that's your intention. So I've learned to conserve my energy a lot more. Again, going back to uh, Master Mark's line, and one of the one of the things that those guys have really hammered in on me is to relax <laughs> yeah true relax and that uh that that hard bridge that it, it, it's bone and 
you might not move that bone, but how do you relax the muscles that hold the bones in line and things like that? My focus has really gone in there a lot. Mm. Uh, and I do a lot more um, like nadon type stuff, you know, the internal. Interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, again, that goes back to when I first met Master Mark, you know, a uh, little story. When I first came into his school, you know, you go down these, this basement and he's just by a little school in a basement at the time. Uh, you come in and you know, a couple of guys I'd already met and elsewhere, you know, we kind of met up before they took me to meet Sifu Mark. Uh, he, he sees me, he goes, who's this? You know, I was like, oh, and so they explained who I am and where I come from. And he comes up to me and he, he puts his hand on my arm around my, you know, here. And he's staring at me, dead in the eye. And his hand comes up a little further and he feels here. Hand comes up a little further. He feels it the whole time. Just two, three minutes. He's like, all right, he's, he can come in. He's, he's good. He come in. And, and then from there, he started, yeah, I mean, it was, I was kind of like, man, what's this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but he, he, he took a, a long, hard look at who I was and what my, my intentions were. Um, and then he, he, he had a conversation about how I need to take all that tension, that, that strength and the, that, that hard power and not carry it with me everywhere. Ah. And relax. Um, my person, I got a hot temper for mm. sure. You know, this is something I understand. You know, I, I, I have had some aggression in me, um, but it's very much tempered, you know, more so the past like 10, 15 years. Um, and that's something that uh, he really stressed in me. Uh, so we did a lot of Nagong, like the six healing sounds would be something that I worked with him a lot. Of. Mm. And uh, various meditations in that regard, just to help center that. Sure. Uh, a lot of work on your liver then. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I I did a lot of work on my liver myself, you know. So I had to fix that. Yeah. Probably probably the opposite sort of work we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, totally. But the the six healing sounds, you know, if you uh, yeah, you call the liver to chill the anger out, you know. Yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> um, an interesting a question from Mark Roberts, who says uh, interesting comments. People are criticised for showing too much. But as you say, uh, they really, they can't improve that much unless they truly understand and put in a hell of, hell of a lot of work. But even then, would probably need feedback from seafoods, etc. So the question is, how much needs to be kept secret? And I'm, I'm assuming, Mark, that you're saying from the students while they're developing, how much do they need to be told? How's it going? So I don't believe in secrets in Kung Fu. I, I think that the, the secrets are progressions. I could explain to you the, the value of the, you know, 108 on day one, and it's going to go right over your head. Yeah. So what's the point? Um, I think that the greatest secret is patience, determination, and, and having eyes bright with it. Like, don't just assume. You can't, mm. you can't assume. You, you have to prove. Um, so for me, I've got an open door for my students, man. They can ask me and pick my brain about anything. Mm. Um, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer it as it relates to what they're working on. Now, it's not secrets, it's progressions. And that's, that, I think, is a key distinction to understand. Um, you know, their forms are generally considered advanced only because the the mechanics, the ideas behind them are more abstract, especially in Dublam. It's, it's dragon tiger boxing. Mm. You know, the dragon, man. Like, what is a dragon? I don't know. So that's the mysterious aspect of your Gong Fu. And that's, that's hardcore in the, in the advanced training. You get, you get into those rougher principles. Um, but yeah, man, I think that the, the key is to try and stay relevant to what you're doing. Don't look too far into the future, but be aware of the path. Again, there's no, there's no uh, finish lines. There's no, and there's checkpoints that you get to in your training. You should really just focus on what your teacher is showing you and question that, but respectfully, you know, like, mm. you know, I mean, 
it's hard because like I learned, man, I did chop step like ridiculous amounts and that's all I did. And you know, the basic stuff, people aren't learning like that nowadays. They don't want to learn like that. It takes time. Yeah. Um, my, my early teacher was a bit of a, a hard head on that stuff. And because of that, I have a great deal of respect for him because I know the benefit of it. Mm. So, but how does that how do how does that work with 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 um potential students uh riley in in in, yeah. in your do, do you does, does that weed out those guys or does it potentially how do you how do you balance that now yeah unfortunately it does weed out quite a few you yeah. know you know i my school i i put together a fundamental program after i started teaching after a couple of years of teaching just you know I, people came threw them into the mantis world and started training Mm. Uh, man that's so frustrating especially when you when you're trying to to make a a modest living with it so i i wound up dumbing everything down and put in more of a a uh, fundamental program weed out those that needed to be weed out right away mm. but even though you're get, you, people get past that three four or five month period whatever it winds up being and and then they realize that they're still doing a lot of that fundamental stuff it, it freaks people out yeah you know mm. but you have to realize that if you don't put in the reps of of your jabs you're nothing i don't care what art you're in yeah and you have to do that repetitive fundamental stuff mm. now here's the trick pay attention in the first hundred days of your class time go home and practice it and you won't have to do so much of that boring fundamental crap in class and you can get into the kung fu stuff um, <laughs> I don't sell. I've had people call me up, set up appointments to come to train. And then the day of, I'm like, they're like, so we're going to do this, this, and this. I'm like, no, man, we're going to train. You're not going to come to my place and just expect me to sell you, you know, the 18 point. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And then they don't show up. You know, my door closes to you. You blow me off, expect me on that kind of thing. I got nothing to say to you. Yeah. Uh, so you, you have to respect the process. Hak yan, hak yi, hak gong fu. And mm -hmm. without it, we have no quality control. You know, um, quality control is huge in, in martial arts. At least it should be. And that's where the progressions matter. Mm -hmm. You don't have a belt system, but at least in my school, you can see how long somebody's been training based on the forms that they know and the drills that they know. That is the quality control. Yeah, you know, uh, that's interesting. How, how many versions of chai sao can you do for a half hour or longer without stopping? If you can only do maybe one shape, you don't know chai sao past a certain level. That's quality control. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Mark, Mark Roberts again on his previous question. He was saying, I'm thinking more about what um, about people worrying about exposing to the the system to the whole world to people that aren't students or maybe aren't even managed students yeah. they, you know, uh, videos of advanced forms or applications and it could apply to you as a, that question as as well as to me and uh, Nish yeah. um, but is it are you kind of concerned about exposing too much to people that are yeah I mean me personally you're not you're not going to see me putting out like you know advanced advanced stuff man I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you know, the, the 108 movement on video. I'm, just, I'm not going to do it because when my students learn it, that means something to them. Yeah. If you, if you have it on video and you can YouTube it and 100 people mimic the movements, I don't know how long with yeah. this. Like, Diminishing. Yeah, this especially is, uh, now with the lockdown. I've seen the value in how the internet can work. Yes. But I'm very much old school in, in my way. I'm pretty reserved. But at the same time, I, I put out videos every day. Yeah. Okay. But usually, it's not going to be like a form. It's mm. going to be, how do you make that form functional? What what goes to it? And in that regard, as, I guess as we I, said, yeah, as we said before about you know the, the um, grandmaster Chi Kang said, you can you, you know if it's just bits and pieces, you can copy the movements. You can't yeah. copy what's happening. So, and it is so self-evident when you see people on YouTube or putting their, a form there, 
those that know know yeah. you can look at that person and see that it's, it's vapid it's empty um myself and niche mark as well also had these concerns these debates when we were teaching and thinking how much should we just give out because we don't want to diminish the art where people think they could just copy it from what we're doing we know they can't but you you will have people and we tried to help those that were keen with giving bits of information but um we but we didn't you know there's lots of stuff that we haven't uh, that's that's got out there nice. and we're not going to you know it's nice yeah, it's nice what Richard has said. He said, you know, they only have the shell of the egg, not the inside essence. And this is uh, Richard Gamba. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, my, my early teacher. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they so. only have the, the shell of the egg, not the inside essence. Very true. Yeah. Um, and to put it, to paraphrase the grandmaster, he said, they can copy me, but they're just doing a monkey dance. <laughs> that's what he yeah. said. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> they're only doing this like a monkey dancing because they haven't got the inside. They haven't got what I do. So they're just jumping around copying shapes. Yeah. You know? So, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think we need to be reserved in, in what we give out. You know, uh, I mean, you get like these, these online programs and I'm not really opposed to it as long as they're quality. But I also don't think you should be certified in any way unless you've done FaceTime. You have to have at FaceTime as well, but also for me, it's it's contact. Somewhere along the line, you have to touch skin. Yeah, that's how that for me, that's how the transmission happens. And not just once at the end, but throughout your training program. But again, myself and Nish, we've been talking about this. There's people we know that they're doing lots of online training and, and I think that you know, the way we were doing it was like live where we were inter trying to interact with people on Zoom and stuff. Um, and there's people that just do set videos, copy this, and then you'll be there. And they may give lots of good information. And um, for those that cannot find a school near them, I, I understand why they, they do want oh, to follow that. I understand. But for me, it's in layers. It's you can watch something and copy along that FaceTime or that um, Zoom where you can, you know, Skype, whatever it is where there's some interaction. So you can get corrections, you can ask the questions and get them answered in real time. And then oh. the next layer is is contact. If you don't touch someone's hand that's, that's experienced, you'll never know. You'll never know if what you're feeling is what has been described. You know? Yes, yes, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I think that that quality control is, is very important in the, day, the digital age. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think that we need to be, you know, reclusive either. You know, like it, nobody's, nobody knows Southern Praying Mantis from, you know, other arts. The name means nothing. Mm. So we have to figure out how to market this to people who, you know, otherwise would go to something much more accessible. Um, yeah. That's where the videos and the clips and the sharing and all that comes in. So yes. that's, Man, I mean, like, like I said, I, I record training every day. Yeah. I put out like 15, 30, maybe 60 seconds at a time. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's been my process is just a, the flood with, with consistent effort. Totally, and, yeah. And if, yeah. You've, if you've got some contact where you're communicating with a person, they can pick up a hell of a lot from that. Yes. Again, me, myself and Nish have been talking about this, about how we could make something like that work and and be of value to people you know that that's you know you're not not just something that's pre-filmed yeah you do this and that and copy that technology change and times have changed so we you know we do need to kind of grasp the uh, rod really yeah um any other question nice interviews thank you angelo um any more questions guys we're gonna carry on with a little bit more I doesn't like it. Don't yeah. be shy. <laughs> um, yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah, you're you're um, just going back now a bit more to the to the butt me. Um, yeah. how, how's your how's the training coming along with that? What what are you kind of the main things that you're doing and taking from that? I have been thoroughly loving it. Uh, Sifu is one of the most generous individuals that I've ever known. Uh, when it comes to openness, like we were just saying, so he, 
secrets, but he has a relatively uh, decent quality control. Um, being he's not gonna he's not gonna teach you what you're not gonna comprehend. Sure. Um, just in my experience, um, I I studied a form or two a year with him. Um, and again, started off as just friends. Me and him were, were, we were buddies. And so that very organic growth there. And I, I find that to be the way to be with it. Um, it's a good way to start, right? He's already, he already knows you. He can already judge your character. Mm. He already knows he you. We hands and push each other as, as, you know, he would say peers, but you know, he's, he's way my senior. Um, so that, that's, that was great. Um, He's, he's got a, a wild, extensive energy to him. He's very wiry. So I've been really working on the Tan Ging uh, with him. Um, something I always kind of lacked because, you know, my skill was always like that heavy, heavy hand, yeah. more magnetic chi sao. Um, so I've been, I've been working to refine the Tan Ging through his, uh, his Pak Mei methods. Uh, very intelligent um, uh, syllabus he's put together through his studies. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's great. It's very fiery, uh, break a sweat in a matter of moments. Um, yeah. Um, mm. his core group up there, uh, Rustin and Richard and, uh, Q and these guys, man, it's a solid group of guys to push and pull nice. on. You know, they're going to go for blood, but they're not going to do it with malicious intent. Um, <laughs> that's huge importance. Cause you know, I, I've been in that experience where I visited other, you know, mantis schools and, you know, a few minutes into a, what should have been friendly, I realized that they don't, yeah. it's like, oh, wait, am I defending myself? Yeah. yeah. Damn. It's kind of an ego thing, isn't it? It's yeah. always, you've got to be on your guard all the time. Uh, but, you know, you're going through your journey and you want to learn and share and experience, not yeah, get I, I, into combat every, every time you meet a new person, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, that's been really great, man. It's been working to refine. I'm still working. This, so I haven't completed it. Um, I think there's what three or four more empty handsets that I have my eye on through uh, Sifu Simon at this point. Uh, and there's like, I think there's 16 or 18 total official empty handsets in that curriculum. Huh. And then again, a whole bunch of weapons, but my, my main interest is the straight sword and staff. Um, there's like five, five pole forms, I think, uh, two, maybe three straight swords. Uh, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Richard. Um, so yeah, these have been kind of my, my focus on that. And, uh, and that's actually becoming the, uh, the front door art to my school. Um, mm. I'm, I'm probably gearing that towards being what I teach first. Um, as opposed to the, the mantis. And that's something I've kind of been moving towards the past like year or two, thinking more of that route. Um, mantis is my love. It's my, it's my, it's my wife. It's my, it's my, my, mm. my, my main squeeze. Mm. Uh, and it's really frustrating to see people give up after time into such an intricate thing. Uh, and I think that Pac may might be a little bit easier to um, give to the layman, somebody who's no experience. <laughs> um, so that's kind of, been, you know, I don't, I'm not set in stone on that, but that's kind of where I've been kind of gearing my training, you know. <laughs> my sure. Son, he's learning Pac May. So I started teaching him the Pac May syllabus as, as his, uh, he's going to be nine now. So he's been doing that for about three years. Wow. Um, and it, it was much easier for him to understand as yeah. opposed to the Sambo Jin and things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Pac May taking a, a front runner towards my uh, my school um, for that reason mm. so, um, interesting mark mark roberts again says uh when you spar or or in <coughs> pardon me, in live situations when you <coughs> contact do you find you blend the methods of the different arts that you've learned or do you find there's a primary art yeah, okay, so everything that comes out of me is, is, is mantis pushed and pulled. I've done it the longest, you know. Mm. Um, but again, mantis and Pac May, it's the same geometry, you yeah. know, sacred geometry that comes out. So mm. when, when it's an application, you're probably not going to differentiate. Yeah. Uh, Juke Lam and Tai Chi, they, they share a lot. 
I mean, they're, they're very, very similar as far as the size of the springs and the, the receiving to return mindset. So in, in, in application work, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's hands, it's feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, like you say, I think there's, there's so much similarities that. Yeah, and as long as your elbows are in control. It's almost impossible to tell what you just did. <laughs> yeah, I'll have students do that to me all the time. We'll, we'll have been sparring and they'll be like, hey, man, what, what did you do? I'll be like, I don't know, man. I'll go back and watch the video. What did you do? Well, yeah. done. Uh, but it's, it's in the moment. It's, it's, it's spontaneous. And that, that's the live sparring aspect. Yeah. Uh, you know, we always start from a, a, a bridge. So you, 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 have, you have to make the contact. So that would be your, your docile. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes we'll start from contact and, and try to break the bridge. Uh, so we'll, we'll give ourselves ideas to try and incorporate in the sparring yeah. and develop it from there. Uh, but pretty much every class ends with a good 45 minutes of that, uh, at least on the regular. You know, once, once, you've, once you've put in a little bit of time, uh, you'll, you'll break it down, man. We'll do, we'll do a PT. We'll do traditional jongs and forms, and then, then we scrap. Nice. I like and, it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did you do much in the way of, of, of pad work at all, um, Riley? Pad work? Yeah, man. I've incorporated, uh, mm. you know, various methods for, you know, hold the pads for, you know, yeah. hammer and how to get those elbows. And that's just so people can let loose in rhythm. Nice. You know? and, and reality is holding the pad is teaching you tenfold. Because mm. now move is what's somebody's reaction or response to me putting my hand out here. Uh, so it's a two-way street, you know. Oh, yeah, you have to be proactive. <laughs> Holding the pads, not not a not a dead target. You have to be proactive. Yes. Uh, so there is benefits to it as well. Yeah, yeah. and that that'll teach you your distance, your timing, and things like this. Because when I'm holding pads, I'm moving, you know. Um, and sometimes I'll be like, dude, I want you to focus on like just three, four things. I don't care what order you do these three, four things in but I want them to be appropriate to what I'm putting in front of you, you know, sure. like, you know, so find that strength, find that structure, find that power. Great. Nice. Cool. Any, um, any stories that, uh, you'd like to share that come to mind around, um, around any of the CFAs that you've trained with, whether it's Louis Jackman or even another one around Master Mark, things that, things that you're like, it happened, you're like, you'll never forget that. Whether it's learning or any funny stories or things that come to mind. Louis gave me a ration of shit for eating too many hot peppers at dinner. Um, he, he, I was just eating, I had the sriracha sauce and hot peppers and we were at a little Chinese restaurant up there yeah. in yeah. Philadelphia. And he's, he was just, we were talking Kung Fu and. I noticed he was just staring at me while I was eating. And eventually he's like, you know, it's too many. What are you doing? <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, not too Kung Fu related, but I remember that. <laughs> That's cool though. <laughs> he he, uh, he come, come visit the school here in Chicagoland and uh, he stomped his foot one time and the whole building shook. Uh, he, he was doing, um, I guess I guess you'd say a blessing to the sun toy. Mm. Um, and power that came out of his you know rooting power that uh everybody in the room kind of went whoa what was that yeah. um that was kind of neat man i don't i don't have a whole crazy lot of stories um you know just train wise uh, a few times i got to do push hands and she saw with master mark uh, again he was in his 80s uh, 90s yeah. at the time. but man it was like smoke you know I, he put his hand out and he'd bridge and Man, he'd just be somewhere else. Yeah. He, even in his age, yeah. he was he was very very much into um, if he liked you, I suppose, and maybe that's why he was checking me out. But um, he would still he would still push and pull on people, uh, and he and loved to give criticism. So you know, I'd be doing uh, forms or drills over here with the guys, and he'd be in the corner just you know giving you, uh, you know, cues from the sideline. And, you know, so that was uh, active with that. That's um, great. Uh, I, 
I got slapped by Uncle Jack Moy when I was, I guess, 15. Um, I was a young, cocky scrapper of a kid, and he didn't like something I'd said, and he slapped me in the chest. And when I came to, they were doing like this, you know, massage kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, finger knockout. Uh, <laughs> the, the idea of. Um, Don't take five steps forward, <laughs> like say still. I, I came to, and everybody in the class was standing in a circle around me. They must have thought I was dead. Um, and that's literally what, what sold me uh, to the idea of like, holy cow, this, this old man just, you know, I thought I was invincible. You know, I was 15, I was pretty strong. Uh, uh, slapped me and I don't remember anything other than waking back up and looking around the room going, okay, I want that. <laughs> you know? So really that's kind of what set me off, you know, um, cause I, I probably, bigger than my Sifu, uh, Sifu Rick was. I, I, I probably outweigh him. Uh, and so when I first met him, I looked at him like, who is this guy? Come on, dad. You know, what is this? You know, uh, go home and see my friends. Uh, so they, they had to, they had to rough me up a little bit. Um, mm. Rick will like this one. I, I, when I came back from my travels, cause you know, I, I hitchhiked for a few years. Um, and I, I came back to his school. I was like, man, I'm, I'm either going to do this nomad thing forever, which part of me kind of said, okay, that's cool. Uh, but, or I'm going to do something with myself. So I went back to his school and I sat down in front of him at the school and I had, you know, dreads at the time, probably not quite this long. And he goes, you want, you want to come live in my house and train Kung Fu with me? And I said, yes, I'd like to do that again. And he goes, you're going to get a haircut. And I said, I didn't really plan on it. <laughs> and he out and he yanked the dreadlock straight out of the top of my head. Oh. And I, I went home and cut my hair. I was mad, man. I was I was pretty angry at him for that. But uh <laughs> But you got I, to learn Kung Fu. So. Yeah, I wanted to learn and so you know, um I, I paid attention and then I moved into his house and hmm. you know, there uh, that's cool man yeah. yeah yeah okay thank you for that so we are we're, we're coming up to that that two hour mark um and it's been great uh really love talking to you uh and hearing about your your experience and your history any any last uh comments from you or anything you you want to share any yeah let me think here man i know everybody's in a stressful world so i just i, I just encourage everybody to breathe you know, six in, six out, get your breath in control. That'll slow your mind down. You can make good decisions. You can train more often if you're making good decisions. Really, that's, that's my hope is everybody out there is, is, is continuing their practice, reaching out to your instructors, reaching out to your, your training partners. Yeah. Make sure every, everybody is doing well and uh, get back to training, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fill your schools, man. As soon as you're feeling comfortable and, and you're able to get back in the world, you need to do that because there's people that are struggling right now. Yeah. So if we want to keep these arts moving forward and keep what, what you guys have been doing these past couple months moving forward, we have to keep that momentum. And that means we need to be very proactive. Yeah. yeah. And we need to that Kung Fu is not magical, chi, touch, knockout. It's, it's just as much choke hitting and kicking is any proper martial art that's so hard work we need to be training it yeah. with that mindset um, everybody out there is, is training uh, their syllabus with heart than studying with um, don't waste anybody's time by blowing them off <laughs> you know you, if you're gonna make an appointment with a with a school do it. it do it you know a man is only as good as his, as his word yeah so these are some of my harsh truths for now. Um, you know, take it and leave it. We appreciate yeah, it. And um, sim simply, uh, simply gongfu.com and same on Instagram as well, right? Yep. Yeah. You look that up. You'll find me. I'm on Instagram. I got a Facebook. Uh, I got a website. We'll share those. Uh, we'll share those with the, with the, when we post it up on YouTube and uh, we'll share the links so people can find you and contact you if they're, if they're so interested to. That would be great. Brilliant. Anything fantastic. from you, Al? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. It's been a, an experience and, and an education speaking to you, um, Riley. It's been it's brilliant. You know, it's a shame 
uh, people may not know this, but 2017, I went to the States and I hooked up with Riley or, or was it, were messaged to try to meet up. We were so close to meeting, but then we kind of went in opposite directions. That and was for the, uh, the, the, big, the big solar eclipse, right? Solar Eclipse yeah. in 2017, I went over to the States to, to see that and I, and I kind of met up with Mike Novak in New York and I trained with yeah. some Dalga in, in New York and then went right across to uh, Oregon and then trying to hook up with Riley because he said he may be in that area. I think I, I, I was in, a few I miles to apart. With my son and you, you were on the coast yeah. to see, yeah. the, see the Eclipse and when I went to Oregon, we chose to go out into the, uh, the desert yeah people. yeah but we, we were within hours and i, I kept saying yeah. to the people, i was like hey come on guys yeah <laughs> do this. All like, ah, i nearly on. yeah i nearly chose to go inland as well because i was looking for the best places with the best weather to, to view it and i just decided yeah, yeah, yeah i want to go to the coast and I, I stayed there but next time you never know you know when this madness starts to ease up and travel comes easier again i, I do plan to head out to the states again so yeah, and as always, you know, right, you know, we'd, we'd, one day we hope we can, we can meet and exchange and, 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 and learn from each other. That would be a wonderful, a wonderful thing. Yeah, lovely to have an exchange. Uh, for policy, guys, for sure. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, everyone, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Riley. It's been great. Thank you, guys. Okay, we 